Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Fenio with Science Buddies, and this is an Arduino radio-controlled boat. In a moment, I'm going to try tossing it into the waterfall behind me with a GoPro attached and show you some of the footage I collect. In the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own Arduino radio-controlled boat so you can use it for your own science project. My little boat that's just made from a plastic food storage container handles surprisingly well in the rough water. But before tossing yours into a waterfall, I recommend testing it in something calmer like a pool or a pond. Onboard cameras make radio-controlled vehicles great for recording footage in places that are difficult or dangerous for people to get to. It also makes them great for science projects where you might want to observe wildlife, since as a big scary human, you might scare animals away if you get too close yourself, but you could be able to approach them with a smaller, quieter vehicle. Of course, you'll want to be careful and make sure you have a plan to get your vehicle back before you do something like launch it down a stream, so again, you will probably want to test yours in a calmer body of water like a pool or a small pond where you can easily retrieve it. In the rest of this video, we'll switch over to some footage from the workshop and talk about how you can build and program one of these yourself. Here is an up-close view of the boat. You can see that this is a double-hulled design with two plastic food storage containers. That helps add an extra layer of protection and waterproofing to keep the Arduino and all these sensitive electronics dry. On the outer container here, we have the two propellers or underwater thrusters mounted along with a waterproof power switch that allows me to turn it on and off without having to remove the lid. Then if we pop the lid on this outer container, we have wires passing through the outer container from the power switch and the motors, which are connected to the spring clips that then are connected to jumper wires that pass through the wall of the inner container and connect to the breadboard and the Arduino. So I can pop off the lid on this inner container, which again is providing that extra layer of leak protection for the Arduino, and see everything inside here. So what we're going to do next is take all of these parts out and talk about how the circuit works before we talk about how to physically assemble the boat. Before we get started with the physical build of the boat, let's do an overview of the circuit. And before we do that, I want to point out that the parts list, circuit diagram, and code for this project are all available in a link in the video description. So I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step build of the circuit in this video. This is going to be an overview. Again, if you want the diagram and parts list so you can build it yourself, check out that link in the description. So with that, let's go through the main parts of our circuit here. We have, of course, our Arduino, which is the brains of the operation. And we are using the Arduino to control these two underwater thrusters, which are basically waterproofed DC motors with propellers attached so you can use them underwater. Now, you could make these yourself by building a waterproof housing for a motor and then buying and attaching a propeller separately but you can also search online for underwater thrusters and just buy these pre-assembled. So it's up to you whether you'd rather buy the parts separately and make them yourselves or just buy them pre-assembled and save some time. Note that I am using brushed DC motors. You will also find brushless thrusters if you look online. So if you want to use the code and the circuit from this project, you need to search for brushed motors, which only have two wires and they're very easy to control with the Arduino using a chip called an H-bridge. So I'm not gonna go over how the H-bridge works in this video. We have a separate video in our Arduino tutorial series, which again, you can find linked in the description of this video. But what that H-bridge allows you to do is use the Arduino to control the speed and direction of both of these motors. So I can make each one independently spin either in forward or in reverse, and I can control its speed. And that is what is going to allow me to steer the boat. And if we zoom out here, everything is going to be controlled by this radio control transmitter. This is a remote control, just like you would get with a toy, RC car, or a boat. And it is paired to this receiver, and the receiver is connected to my Arduino. So the Arduino is reading the output signals from this receiver and converting those signals to control the speed and direction of these motors. So when I push on one of these joysticks, it will make the corresponding motor spin. And again, this is just an overview. If you go to the video description, we have a more detailed video about these receivers and how you couple them to an Arduino, what their output signal looks like, and the code for how you can read that signal and then convert it to something like controlling a motor or an LED or anything else with your Arduino project. Again, I'm not gonna go over that. 
in detail in this video. This is just an overview. But again, the idea is I have this controller, which actually has way more inputs than I need. These joysticks each have two axes and there's a bunch of other buttons. So I am only using the up and down motion of each joystick here, each one to control the speed of one of the motors. Finally, zooming back in, we have the power for the circuit. The motors are powered by this external lithium battery because the Arduino itself cannot provide enough current to run these motors directly. And I have a waterproof switch that I am going to run through the hull of my boat later so I can turn it on and off without having to remove the cover. Now, a note on these batteries, these can provide a lot of current. So you need to be really careful to avoid short circuits when working with them as you can see here from this melted connector. This happened when I accidentally had the positive and negative wires short together. You can see this totally melted all of the insulation on these wires and started smoking and would have been a fire hazard had I not disconnected the battery very quickly. So it is very important to practice good electronic safety and avoid short circuits. Don't have loose wires or a messy workspace when you are working with these batteries. And in general, you wanna keep your circuit switched off when you are working with it, moving wires around, that sort of thing, and not turn it on until you are ready to test. So a general overview of what we're going to do next and what you can do when designing your boat is to take all of the electronics and put them inside an airtight plastic food storage container. So the Arduino, the battery, and the breadboard, and the receiver are all going to go inside this, and then the motors will be mounted on the outside, so they will be in the water, but then all of your electronics will be safely on the inside. This is a design decision that's really up to you in terms of the shape and size of container you use. I do recommend going for a slightly higher end or nicer food storage container that you can be pretty sure is not going to leak. I spent a little more money on one that is advertised as 100% airtight and leak proof because some of the cheaper ones might leak when they're in water. And I am actually really going to go overboard and do sort of a double hulled design here. So I am going to put all of the electronics inside this smaller container, which then fits inside the bigger one. So I have kind of a double layer of waterproof protection here, where if the outer container starts leaking, then I have a, another container to protect the Arduino and the battery and everything because we are going to need to drill holes in these containers to pass the motor wires through them. So even though the motors get mounted on the outside, we need to connect these wires to the Arduino and everything on the inside. So we're going to drill those holes and then seal them with some silicone sealant to waterproof them. But again, that double hold approach of having two containers with those holes drilled and sealed will give me an added layer of protection just in case I develop a leak in the outer container. Before you start drilling holes in your container, it's a good idea to plan out where you're going to put everything. So I am using these spring connectors that make it easy to detach the motors. I am going to have my Arduino, the battery, and the receiver all inside this smaller container. And then I'm going to need to run my power switch. Through the wall of a smaller container and then through the wall of the outer container. The motors are going to mount on the bottom of the larger container. There are going to be bolts that will go through the bottom of the large container to hold those in place. I should have mentioned earlier, depending on where you buy these thrusters, they probably will come with mounting hardware. So these come with clips that the motor will snap into that allow you to then bolt it onto a flat surface. And then finally, I'm going to need to run the wires from the motor through the wall of the outer container and I'm going to drill these interior motors through this wall and then I'll have the clips in between the two containers to allow me to connect motor wires to these clips that go in to the central container there. So I'm not going to film all of it but I'm going to go ahead and start marking out locations and then drilling holes where I'm going to pass through all those wires and bolts and then we will talk about the waterproofing process with the silicone. So here is the inner container. After I have drilled those holes for the motor wires and for the switch, I kept the diameter of the holes as tight as possible so it's a snug fit but not going to rip or tear the insulation on the wire by forcing it through. And then again later we're gonna come back and seal all of those holes up with the silicone. 
Also note that I have just removed the battery completely while I am working on this, just to reduce the chance of accidental short circuits and melting something. You don't want your drill bit anywhere near that battery. So I've done this for the inner container. Then I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes and mount everything on the outer container. Then we can start putting it together and working on sealing up all the holes. Next up, we have the outer hole, where if we flip this over, you can see I have drilled holes for the hardware to mount the motors to the bottom, holes for the motor wires to pass through the bottom, and then a single hole for this panel mount switch to mount to the back. This is a waterproof switch, so I'm still going to use some silicone sealant to seal around the hole, but the switch itself is waterproof and can be exposed to water. And then I can do a dry fit to make sure everything will connect. So I have my motor wires coming out of the Arduino. I've also added additional wires for the switch with this triple spring connector to connect to the switch. So this will fit in here and I'm not gonna do it now, but then I can use all of these spring connectors to connect all of my wires and put the lid on both of these containers so the whole thing will be waterproof. But what I'm going to do before I do all that is take the Arduino out. So I'm going to disconnect the wires from the breadboard, remove the Arduino completely, and do all of my waterproofing, and then test the waterproofing before I put the Arduino back in, because you don't want to find out the hard way that you have a leak while your Arduino is in there. So I'm going to go ahead and use my silicone sealant to seal up all of these holes Make sure you follow the directions on the sealant. You may need to wait up to a full day before it is completely waterproof, so you don't want to rush it and test your waterproofing or do your leak testing too early. I'm going to finish that up. I'm going to snap both the lids on the containers and then go submerge this in something like a bathtub to look for leaks before putting the Arduino in and testing the vehicle. Here I'm just zooming in on an example. You can see that it's a little messy, but I have applied the silicone sealant around the two holes where these wires pass through. For the motors, I actually took the brackets off and applied the sealant under them and then put the bolts back through and tightened them so I can get a good seal directly between the bracket and the surface of the container instead of trying to seal around the top of the screw head and the washer here, because if I did that, then water could still just leak under the bracket and get through the hole. And then same thing for the smaller container. I've used the sealant around all of the wire pass-throughs. You wanna be careful not to jostle or pull on the wires after you've done that, because again, you have to wait for the silicone to set before it is completely waterproof. So I'm going to let that sit for a day, come back, and then do my leak testing. After the silicone has dried completely, I'm going to conduct my leak test. So again, I have removed the Arduino because you don't wanna find out the hard way that you have a leak while all of your electronics are in there. I'm doing this double hole design, so I've put the lid on my inner container, which would have the Arduino in it. I'm going to put that inside the outer container, and then I'm going to snap the lid on the outer container. And even though this is a boat, not a submarine, so I expect it to be floating around on the surface of the water, I'm going to submerge it completely just to test for leaks, just in case it gets swamped by a large wave or have it out in the rain or something. I really want to protect my electronics, so I'm going to push it down here in the bathtub and look for air bubbles coming out of it to see if I have leaks anywhere. So you might be able to see this on camera. It looks like I had some air bubbles coming out from around where I sealed the button in the back there. So I might not have a great seal by the button. I'm gonna take that out, double check, apply more silicone if needed, then come back and repeat my leak testing until everything is sealed. After finishing my leak testing, I have gone ahead and mounted the Arduino and the breadboard back inside the inner container, along with the battery, again being very careful to avoid short circuits or loose wires bumping into each other when handling the battery, and keeping the power switch off until I am ready to test. Before I put the lids on and seal everything up, I am going to power it on and double check my controller, make sure that both of my motors are working. I should be able to feel air blowing back towards me when I push one of the joysticks forward. If you don't and you feel the air coming towards you when you pull the joystick back, then that means you simply have the wires reversed for that motor. So you can either swap the two wires or you can actually change the two Arduino pins in the code. So there's two ways to reverse the direction of the motor. Once you know that your motors are spinning the right way, you can go ahead and seal up 
in both the inner lid, which again is providing that extra layer of protection for all these sensitive electronics, and the outer container lid, which is helping you if water splashes in or you get waves or if it capsizes. And then I am ready to go actually test my boat in the tub and then assuming that works in a larger body of water. So here we go. I don't really have a lot of room to maneuver in this tub, but I can confirm that my boat is working and responding to my commands to make it go forward, backward, and steer left and right. So now I am ready to go test it in a larger body of water like a swimming pool or a pond. And as you saw earlier in the video, I tested my boat out at the base of a waterfall where clearly I needed to be careful because there are some stronger currents and I didn't want to lose the boat. So again, highly recommend testing out in a pool or a small pond or even a bathtub to start, although you'll run out of room in a bathtub and probably want a bigger body of water so you don't risk losing your boat. If you're having trouble getting your boat to work, you can find troubleshooting and debugging information in the written instructions on our website, which again is linked in the description of this video. You can also find many more Arduino projects and other projects in all areas of science and engineering at our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.